Master Edwards here shooting 24 kicks for the beginners. All right, we're talking white and yellow belt juniors uh, getting stronger with these basic kicks, the meat and potato kicks for Taekwondo training. All right, so first we just want to work foot position on, on the kicks. All right, so for the front kick, I want you to stand up on, on the ball of your foot and I want you to hold that. All right, now as we pick that foot up, the, the, the ankle and toes should stay just like that. I remember when I first started doing this and I'd pick my foot up, my toes would fall. And I'd pick my foot up, my toes would fall. And I remember that first time where I picked up and they didn't fall. All right, so the, the foot is getting that, that position down so we can make the front kick, which this uh, foot position is called foot position number two. We make this, uh, this foot position and maintain that during the kick. All right, so what's, uh, what I see happen a lot as well, and I want you to watch very carefully as you do this kick. I'm going to get my cane so, I, so my balance is good through this. Is as people would kick, they'd come up and they'd have a good foot position. And as they would kick, they would pull their ankle back. All right, so watch for that and see if you're, you're somebody that's doing that. Then maintain the foot position, but then during the kick, the ankle would come back and then you're, you're front kicking with the heel. And that is a foot position for the front kick, just not for these particular kicks for now, right? All right, so 24 kicks, all right? Foot position number two for the front kick. Just hang on to something, grab the refrigerator, the back of the couch, a chair, and I just want you to practice kick the ground, kick the ground, kick the ground, and see if you can maintain that foot position and just nice and slow with both feet, all right? So we need this chamber, Maintain the foot shape, the kick, and the rechamber. All right. If we need, put your kick on video and then look at it and just see at the end of that kick if you still have that foot shape. All right. So we need to get some reps on both legs, both feet, making sure that we can maintain the foot shape. All right. Second thing on the 24 kicks, for specifically the front kick is, is we want to lock and hold. So once we do the kick, you have to hold it for a second before you reach chamber. Whatever height you kick at, it has to hold right there. Now, if we get the lock and hold, and then the leg drops before it reach chambers, all right, you probably kicked a little bit out of your uh, strength zone for that leg. So I don't want to see that kick and that drop. All right, so just lower the kick a little bit and force that, that foot to stay right there and then Rechamber. All right, so we've got foot position, number one. Number two, you must lock and hold. The lock and hold needs to be for training maybe two or three seconds, right? So we put it out there, one, two, three, and rechamber, or maybe put it out there, one, two, and then rechamber, so that by the time uh, we're testing with this or competing in a tournament with this, we can do a one second lock and hold that it holds out there for just a second and rechambers. Again, we just don't want to see the lowering of the of the uh, of the foot as it as we do the lock and hold. All right. So third point is we want to rechamber. You got to get the foot back without the knee dropping. All right. So I don't want to kick here and then rechamber down here. You saw my knee drop as I did the rechamber. That knee has got to stay up in the air. And what's happening is here, you've not done a lot of kicking before. And these muscles here are, are developing strength. So the leg will drop. Sometimes it's balance. Sometimes it's, it's a strength also. But this is getting better. All right, the more kicking we do, the better kicker you're going to be. But you can't go, well, oh, I'm kicking, I'm not getting better. Well, you're right. You've got to be good quality. So we've got to have the foot position. You've got to have the lock and hold without lowering. you got to rechamber without the knee dropping. So for the front kick, kick and pull back. All right, up, uh, out, lock and hold. Hold this for just a second before we set the leg back down. Maintain the foot shape, all right? Now, what should the hands be doing when we're kicking? All right, we're talking about the foot position, the leg and the knee and the rechamber and all this other stuff. What should the hands be doing? Well, they should be up in guarding position. All right, so if I start in my horse stance and I've got my hands in guarding position and I make this beautiful kick, but the hands are doing something else. All right, so we've got to, don't let the hands detract from this beautiful kick that you've got. All right, so just make sure the hands are up and they are not moving as you're kicking. Just hand out in front, 
hand back here by your face and just maintain this position, all right, as we step up and make the front kick. All right, so um, after each one of the kicks, let's make sure that our double guarding block starts not all the way behind us. There's just a little bit of an angle over here to the side. They're like a 45 degree angle back behind us. All right, the hand that's farthest away from us, that palm is out and the other one is palm in and the hands come around and they twist at the very end. All right, you see it's not straight up and down like this. There's a little bit of an outward angle with that elbow. All right, this is a shoulder level. The other hand is under the chest. So start and get based on this starting position where my hands are, there's a twist at the end. There's that, that little bit of focus at the last second of the double, double guarding block. So after this beautiful kick, we want to have something strong that we're finishing with versus this really nice kick and we step back and the hands don't do anything. All right, so I like the exercise that the upper body's getting by having that double guarding block in there. All right, now footwork wise, there's a, a, a little bit of detail here that we've got to have for our 24 kicks. And that's that when you start in your horse stance, that you don't turn your foot and then step. That becomes a really bad habit. And what will happen later in your training is you'll be sparred and you'll turn your foot and somebody will kick you. Won't kick you hard. I want you to be scared of sparring, but you'll get hit. All right? You'll get tagged basically, and it's just it's just a tap, right? All right? And you'll, you'll turn oh, and you'll get hit. And you'll turn your foot and you'll get hit. But you don't know you're turning your foot, but they see it. Your partner will see the foot move and they'll go, oh, they're getting ready to do something. Poof, and they'll put a really fast kick in or punch in there on you. All right, so if it takes me a second to turn the foot and a second to step and then another second to kick, you, my friend, have a three second kick. All right, what if you did not turn that foot? What if the foot stayed there and you just did one, two? All right, now you've got a faster kick. All right, so again, we have to learn not to telegraph that front foot. Now, I know stepping is a telegraph in itself, right? All right. So but we, we've got to get closer to the target, or we could invite them to step in, and we could pick up and kick, and then we have a one-second kick, right? All right, but the way the 24 kicks are designed, it is a step. So do not turn the foot and then step. All right, now, as you step up, then you can turn your body a little bit uh, more forward facing so we can make the front kick. I've got to say it's a little bit awkward to stay sideways and pick the leg up like this and make the front kick. All right, can be done, but what I like to see is, is as you're in your horse stance, as you step up, you turn the foot here, turn the body at an angle here with the hand still up. And then from there, we make the front kick, step down close together, we reach back and make the double fist guarding block from there. All right, so there's the details on the front kick. What I would like to see is a lot of repetition with this. Uh, if you're doing the uh, kicking challenge, then you're doing uh, 25 of these every day, right and left, all right? But the minimum is three, all right? To get the 24 kicks done, it's four kicks done with both legs three times each, and that comes out with 24. All right, now let's move on to the details in the round kick that I'd like you to be practicing. All right, foot position. Foot position for the round kick is top of the foot for the white and yellow belts. So I want you pointing your toes. This is foot position number one, all right? The striking surface would be the top of the foot. So my toes are pointed as I make this, uh, make this front leg round kick. All right, so um, a couple of details in, in this kick. I want you to see that if in this round kick, if I lifted my knee up, have the elevator lifting the knee, and then the foot reaching out to make the kick. I've got some momentum going this direction, lifting up, and then I've got some more momentum. The kick is going this direction. So the lift is the elevator to get my foot to where I can make the kick, right? So the lift doesn't have a lot to do with the power because the momentum of the lift is going this way. What if I were lifting on this side of the target, and then as I did my kick, my knee and my foot both went in together? That would be more powerful. Now my knee is going that way and the foot is going that way for the kick. 
All right, so the first example would be the knee comes up and the foot goes out. All right, knee here, foot here. Knee not doing a lot for the power. But what if I lifted my knee on this side of the target and then I let my knee and the foot come through at the same time? That's called a double extending radius. I've got my knee making a circle this direction and my foot making a circle in the same direction. So the knee and the foot working together to make power. All right, so as we practice this uh, lead leg kick, uh, it's best if you can step and lift your knee here. If my target were right here, I'm gonna lift my knee here, just a little bit on this side of the target. And then the knee and the foot can make the round kick. So as I step, my knee comes up and the knee and the foot works together. So sometimes that can be a great drill, hanging onto a wall, hanging onto a cane, hanging onto a refrigerator, hanging onto a vacuum cleaner, whatever you got to hang on to, right? And just work knee, foot, bring it back. Knee, foot, bring it back. Knee, foot, and bring it back. Again, that's something that takes some practice to make happen. A lot of times even, we'll see the negative side of this, that when we just lift our knee up to make the kick, sometimes the knee will actually go backwards as the kick goes forward. Now we've got momentum going that way and the kick going that way and there's not much power in it. All right, plus it, there's a chance of, uh, of, of not making the knee stronger as we do that as well. All right, we don't want to hyperextend that knee every time we throw the kick. All right, so the knee and the foot need to work together. Now, if we add that last piece of the pie in, and that is the pivot on the, uh, on the round kick. So, so far we've not done anything with the bottom foot, but let's pretend again the target is here, all right? That would mean that when I make my knee and my foot come through the target, the bottom foot, the heel, would turn around toward the target, right? All right, so that actually adds a third circle, a third radius. The knee is making a circle, the foot is making a circle, and now the hip is making a circle when we do the pivot. All right, so let me show you one of the ninja secrets on, on making this pivot uh, easier. The heel comes up off the ground, the heel turns, and then the heel steps down. All right, you'll see that it happens, but it happens quickly as the heel pops up and the heel comes back down to make the pivot. It's very hard to have the foot completely on the floor and, and have that pivot, unless you've got socks on a very slippery floor, and then you might fall down, right? All right, so anyway, the, that makes it more difficult. So every time I pivot, I do a little heel hop. Heel comes up and the heel comes forward as we make that pivot. So to practice the pivot though, at very first, it's very hard to make the pivot. So we have to do the pre-pivot. So from the horse stance, we step, pivoted. And then we try to bring the knee and the foot around to make the round kick and step down and step back. And once we get some reps with that, we're feeling more comfortable with the bottom foot pivoting. Let's say more comfortable. It's not comfortable to pivot and make the kick. It, for most people, it takes a lot of practice to be comfortable with that. All right, so be uncomfortable. <laughs> make sure the bottom foot is turned all the way around so that when we've done some practice with that and it's more comfortable, you can step not pivoted and then pick your knee up and then make the pivot and the kick come in at the same time. All right? So that's the most powerful way to pick that lead leg up and make that round kick. All right? So that's eventually where we want to get to. All right. So um, let's talk about uh, the hand staying up in guarding position. As that hip turns, the hands want to, want to kind of come out of control. So we got to think about where the hands are. Um, a lot of times when we make the, uh, we make the round kick go one way, this, this other hand will come back here. Kind of a, a counterbalance thing is why that comes back. And there's an action and a reaction kind of going with that also. So um, you have to develop a lot of discipline to make sure that the hands stay up when we do the round kick, especially this back hand. So a lot of times I say just just grab a hold of your face, just hang on to it. You know, I remember uh, coming coming through the ranks with, with uh, Master Burles and he'd have us hold our ears when we would kick. Just to make sure we develop that discipline of this back hand staying up as we pivot and make the round kick. All right? Um, 
Lastly, on this round kick, I want you to be very aware of, and this will be the same with the other, the other kicks, is where are your eyes? All right, when I pivot and kick, I'm turning around sideways like this, so we don't want to allow the shoulder to turn. We want to keep the shoulder back so I can see the target with both eyes. All right, um, you'll find sometimes when you're kicking, if you close the front eye, and you step up and you make your kick, a lot of times you'll turn your head just up and you'll say, wow, I can't even see the target now with this, with, with this back eye. All right? If I turn all, oh, now I can see the target. But this is where the head should be, especially when we're using both eyes. All right, so both eyes on the target as, as we, uh, as we uh, pivot and make the round kick. All right? We know having both eyes on the target makes us much more successful in hitting the target. Uh, if you're not sure about that, then, you know, shoot basketball with one eye closed a lot and the other eye closed a lot. All right, so both eyes, obviously, we are more successful at hitting the target. Okay, so um, some, some great points on the round kick. Again, um, uh, we didn't talk about the re-chamber. It would be the same uh, with a round kick as we, as we talked about with the front kick earlier. You know, as you make the round kick, you don't want to kick up here and re-chamber down here. All right, we want to make sure that we lock and hold, and locking and holding on the round kick is not easy. All right, it's, it's not easy. If it were easy, everyone would be a black belt. All right, so we've got to get used to being uncomfortable. All right, uh, lock and hold. Again, practice for three seconds holding that leg out there, and then rechamber. And you might not be successful with it at first. All right, keep practicing. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. And that will eventually get better. Okay, so let's move on to the side kick. Side kick foot position is this. All right? So we want to make sure like we're, we're kicking the ground with our, with our heel. So knee up, knee down. And with the side kick, we know the knee comes, knee comes up to the chest. All right? So the side kick... Uh, for the 24 is a step behind side kick also. So when we step behind the kicking leg, we're stepping not just behind it, take a little bit more of a step and make sure that the heel that you stepped with, that that heel is pointing where you're going to do the kick. All right. Now that heel has to stay there as the kicking leg does the chamber of the side kick and actually does the kick and the re-chamber. All right, so that bottom foot has got to stay put through that. And that, again, is not easy. It takes practice, all right? Now, uh, the best way to practice, obviously, hanging on to something so you don't have to worry about balance. And just develop that muscle memory that this is the correct body position to be in when we, when we make the side kick. All right, so we got to pivot. Now, did you see what my shoulders were during, doing during that? All right? My shoulders are sideways, right? As I step behind, my shoulders are still sideways. What happens a lot of times is because we may tense the stomach muscles up as we, as we do these kicks, we'll step behind and the shoulders will turn with the hip. All right, now we're not going to be able to see the target very well. It's not going to end up being a very pretty side kick either. All right, so we want to make sure. We, we need a beautiful kick. This is an art, martial art, something beautiful that's... Pleasing to the eye, that's the art. All right, all right. So, as we step behind, the shoulder stays sideways. So, we want to practice pivoting, keeping the shoulder sideways as we step. And then to maintain this through the side kick, that takes some work to keep that shoulder sideways. All right. So, um, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss keeping the shoulder sideways during the kick in just a moment, but I want to kind of come up into the chamber. Uh, now, and then we'll come back to that shoulder thing in a moment. All right, so we're doing the step behind side kick. As we step behind in chamber, I want to use this as a marker. So when I step behind and I pick my kicking leg up, you, I want to put this as this is the line of my body on the back side of the body here. All right, as I step behind and pick my side kick up, the knee needs to come back on this line back here. All right, so what we'll see a lot when people do the step behind side kick is they'll step behind and they'll pick their knee up and the knee is here and it's supposed to be back here, like this. So when we say pull your knee to your chest, we are saying try to, without the use of your arm, squeeze that knee back and up into the chest, tight as you can get. And when you do that, you'll see your knee coming back in line with the back side of your body. 
Now from there, what, what we would have is this knee is pushing that heel in a long line out.